my attention here at Bungonia is to not invent things, but to recognise that this old landscape over a very long period and over huge variations from tropics to the temperate zone did very functional things which were counterintuitive and I could show that by putting simple management of water and then using the plants to fill all the gaps that I couldn't fill, the results have been spectacular. I've been coming here since he first purchased the place and have seen it go from a very degraded property that was overgrazed to a place that's now coming back to life through his slowing the water down, spreading fertility about. And uh, yeah, it's always great to come along and see the change that are happening. The contour banks where the water soaks into the landscape and then collects fertility from the strategically placed organic matter is incredible to see where that fertility has flown in the landscape below it. It's visible, not only just in difference in colour, but also in the plant growth. In the last 200 years, we've made all the mistakes and you sit in the gully lines. Massive erosion, you just have to walk up a gully line, you can see where it's happened. But the blueprint is actually on the ridge lines. It's more or less like a skeleton. It gives you a bit of a, an idea as to what the landscape is like, where the original change of slope is. Once you can see that, even if you make a few mistakes, for goodness sake, you're only putting a 30 centimetre contour there, it's not going to cause a big problem, but you immediately see the benefits. As Peter often says, the, the Australian landscape is a unique proposition to use as a model for all the things that we need to resolve. And the evidence is here, you know, we mitigate drought, we build fertility, it's a cooler climate. All of the things that we want, including the sequestration of carbon, happens in these soils through the use of plants. And interestingly enough, I can't see on the planet any other cheaper, easier, more simple way than just working with nature. It just can't be ignored when you drive across the state when it's in drought and it's you know, like this road, the whole state, and then you get to a property where Peter's been and influenced the hydration there, and it's still green. It is really self-evident, as Peter suggests, that this Australian landscape has all the lessons within it. It's just being able to read it and understand it and then incorporate that in your management programs. If we want healthy communities, we need healthy food. And we need to find that, that bridge for people so that they can see that there's another way without the use of chemicals. And there's ways you can actually set up your farm to make your farm more resilient and help the climate at the same time. For me, landscape literacy is being able to look at your property or someone else's property and the infrastructure, what you've got and what needs to be there to help improve the flow and make it come back alive. And I feel that once we get the basic infrastructure set up and functioning, that then I can take it on and do my own stuff and start playing with it, observing and experimenting. If we take the whole of landscape approach across the whole of the country, it means that we turn Australia into a flourishing environment which can actually utilise its own uh, innate strengths of resilience and recovery to withstand these inevitable cycles of drought and flood in the most effective way and ensuring that all landholders are able to prosper and do the right thing by the planet. Every landscape scientist in Australia at least needs to come here talk to Peter, walk the place and understand from a knowing that it's here in front of us. We don't need any more evidence, it's here. This ancient land had these processes that happened in the landscape repeat themselves all over the place that now can be identified and they've never failed. The potential is limitless.